it is so true what they say that the more stuff that you own, the more your stuff owns you. Here on my channel, I talk a lot about ownership because as a minimalist, I have really experienced that reducing the inventory and the amount of stuff that we have in our home has really contributed to making our lives a lot easier. So on this channel, we've already touched on things that I stopped buying as a minimalist, things that I don't own as a minimalist, things that are essential to me as a minimalist. And today what I thought I could do is touch upon some of the things that I still own, but in limited supply, only one of each item. So here's a list of 10 things I own only one of as a minimalist. And don't forget to drop me a comment down below and let me know what is something that you only own one of in your home that maybe wasn't included on this list or you haven't heard people talk about before. I look forward to reading your comments and let's dive in bed sheets and pillowcases. And I think that people find it quite shocking to hear that we only have one set of linens for each of our beds. The boys have one set of white sheets and pillowcases on their bed. My husband and I have one set of sheets and pillowcases for our bed. And we don't even have sheets underneath our blankets because we really just found it uncomfortable and kind of a useless piece that we didn't need. So that is something that we completely eliminated. Because we live in a 100 year old home, we've really had to get creative with our storage solutions. And so we don't have a lot of extra space to be storing a lot of extra linens. Even though I don't have a dryer, we've never had a problem where we had to go to bed without having bed sheets or pillowcases on our bed. And that's because what I do is when the sheets are in need of cleaning, I put them in early in the morning and they go through the washing cycle. Then I hang them out to dry. If it's the summer, sometimes I'll put them out on the balcony so that they can get nice, fresh, warm air. If it's the winter, sometimes I'll use my C-stand or two chairs to hang it up so that it's really nice and spread out and it can dry out faster. But we've never had a situation where we had to go to bed without having bed sheets or pillowcases on our bed. So for us, it really does seem like the sweet spot is having one set of pillowcases or bed sheets. The second thing we only own one of is a yoga mat. And my husband purchased a yoga mat because he wanted to be able to do some meditation and home exercises. I am not someone who is big into exercising at home or exercising at all, truth be told. But every once in a while, I do use it for my morning stretches or to do some yoga routines or to do some crunches. And so in that case, I go to my husband's office where he keeps the yoga mat and I just borrow it and we have really found it okay for us to be sharing that yoga mat. And that way we don't have to own two yoga mats that would take up a lot of space and we don't really have storage for. The third item on this list is eyeglasses. Most of the time I'm wearing contacts when you see me on my channel, but I do have glasses and I've actually had glasses since I was nine years old. I'm actually really, really salty about how bad my eyesight is because I can never get to choose from like the cute glasses. I always have the big giant glasses. Can you see like how they pull in the sides of my head here? So I like never have the option of having the really small, cute glasses. I always have to have the big dummy thick glasses, but they don't look too bad, right? Marissa, how you doing? So I used to keep my old glasses. Every time I got a new set of glasses, I would keep my old set just in case. But it was really my experience that I never found myself reaching for my backup glasses. And if there was ever a time where my glasses were like unusable, say like the screw fell out, I would be wearing my contacts instead and I could get it resolved pretty quickly. So I found that I wasn't needing to keep backup glasses in my home. So this is my one and only pair of glasses. And also I have a carrying case for travel for my glasses should we go on vacation and that's it. Number four on this list is high heeled shoes. And I used to be someone who wore high heeled shoes more often, mainly for when I was going out to dance with my friends in the evenings. But once I became a mom and was chasing after my kids, I really found that I wasn't reaching for high heel shoes as much and I wasn't really dressing up as much in general. So I've gotten rid of all of my high heels except for one pair. And I think that the cream and white color is really versatile enough that I could pair it with a lot of different outfits that I had should I have the occasion where I need to put on high heels, which is maybe a couple times a year, maybe. So because I wear high heels so rarely, I've really found that I only need to keep one pair in my shoe inventory. Number five on this list is a winter coat. I had to swap out my old winter coat because it was like too short 
and I was really, really feeling cold because here in Berlin, it can get quite, quite cold in the winters. And so I wanted something longer that went down as close to my knees as possible to keep me as warm as possible because I am a coldy lux. I've never been someone who is big into coats and like styling outfits with the various coats. So really having one coat was enough for me. I do have a lighter jacket that I use for like the spring and the autumn, and then I will layer more sweatshirts inside of it depending on how cold it is. So for me, I've really found that having one winter coat is absolutely enough to get by here in the climate that we live in. Number six on this list of things I only own one of is a pair of jeans. And this isn't necessarily something I did very intentionally, but it just kind of happened that as I was decluttering my wardrobe, each time I was getting rid of pants because they were wearing out, and I was down to my last pair of jeans. They had a hole in the knees. I honestly, I'm hard on my pants, like playing and crawling around on the floor with my kids. And I found the pair that I own now at the flea market. They were a bit large for me, but I loved the style and the fit so much. And they were so comfortable that I went ahead and got them because they were such a great deal. And I have been meaning to do a video where I try to sew and cinch in the waist a bit because I have not found a seamstress in my area that I feel like is reliable enough to tackle a project like this. So I will keep you updated if that does happen. But until now, I've just been using a belt with them and that has worked perfectly fine for me. However, I do feel like I might enjoy having another pair of jeans. So if you guys have any brand recommendations for good jeans, I have the problem where I have a smaller waist and big hips and legs. So if you know any brands that are good for that kind of figure, please let me know in the comment section below. By the way, I'd just like to pause for a second and say, if you own more than one of the items that I'm talking about, there's no reason to feel guilty or feel like you need to be pressured to get rid of it. I always tell people on my channel that minimalism is going to look different for everyone. And what I feel like I only need one of, you might feel totally different and that's totally valid and okay. And just because I say that right now, at this moment in time, I only own and need to own one of these things, that could change in the future. So I encourage you to remain flexible and just keep an open mind and always be willing to evaluate what you do and do not need, use, and love in your life. And if you're looking for more reality-based minimalism tips and ideas to help you live a simpler and more clutter-free life, make sure to go down and hit the little red button to subscribe to my channel and join our minimalist family. I hope to see you around again soon. Number seven on this list is a TV. And I'm sure that some of you are thinking, how many TVs does a person need to own? But in my family, almost every single family member that I can think of had two or three or even four TVs. Don't get me wrong, we enjoy watching TV. We enjoy watching movies together as a family. I feel like it's really helped my son's language acquisition when we moved to Germany to help them learn German better. We would turn on the shows in German so that they could listen to it as they were trying to improve their language skills. And we also got the boys a Nintendo Switch for Christmas and we have had so much fun playing video games as a family. My personal favorite is Mario Kart because that's something I grew up playing when I was younger and I'm so excited that I can play against my little guys now and we can have fun together racing each other as a family. And we've also set the rule that Monday through Friday, we don't turn on the TV or play video games and that's only reserved for the weekends. So that's just how we've set it up in our family, which is quite, quite different than what I grew up with. Number eight on this list is a mixing bowl. And when I started thinking about this, I realized that this is one of those things that my family also had a lot of growing up up. Like my mom had the classic Pyrex colorful mixing bowl set. But now in our home, I've realized that I only really need one mixing bowl to mix the things that I make. I make pizza from scratch quite often and I use the mixing bowl for that. I use it to make things like waffles. And if there's any time where I would need an additional bowl, what I do is I just grab a pot that I have out of our drawer and I use the pot instead of having like a separate mixing bowl. For us, one mixing bowl and having the pots to contribute additional bowl space is enough for us. Number nine on this list is a headband. I do wear ponytails a lot, but mainly what I use my headband for is when I want to wash my face. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but like I have crazy flyaways like all the time on the top of my head. I mean like 
cockroach antennas sticking out. Like, what is up with that? So this is the one headband that I keep as part of my skincare routine that just kind of helps me keep my hair out of my face and while I'm washing it. And finally, the last item on this list is my cardigan. When I was choosing this cardigan, I particularly was looking for a color that I felt could go with most of the outfits, if not all of the outfits in my wardrobe. So you've probably seen me wear this in a lot of videos and that's because it's so versatile and the color is so neutral that I've really found that I can put it over most of my shirts or dresses and with all of the combinations of pants. It's comfortable, it's warm, and it fits my style. So what more could a girl ask for? So that's why I really only need to own this one cardigan. The one problem that I do see with it is that it tends to get a bit fuzzy. So the other day I had to use a defuzzer and kind of go over it. All I need to do is take care of it and defuzz it on occasion, and this can last me for a while. So that's a list of just a few of the things that I've pared down to be able to own only one of in my home. And if you're interested to know how I've created rules for myself that have helped me mindfully own less, make sure to go check out this video, or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care, bye-bye.